What's going on, my friends? This is Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. We have a fellow, uh, well, a guy who's cut from the same cloth, cloth is my uh, me and my history. Um, I'm excited to hear his story. Uh, let's jump right into it. Please, everybody uh, in the comments and who are jumping on, help me welcome Eric Forner to the show. What up, brother? How's it going, Dave? How you doing? Excellent, man. Excellent. So, you, uh, you know, we have you, the title here is, you know, former alcoholic, um, now crushing it online. Uh, so tell us, tell us your, tell us your story in a nutshell, bro. All right. So, um, basically my story stems from when I was born in Las Vegas, uh, grew up in a gang, highly gang populated area. Um, I wasn't in gangs myself. I was like one of the only white families in a highly populated Hispanic area. Right. So, uh, growing up was rough, uh, got involved in drugs and alcohol at an early age, um, and then eventually kind of got out of it, uh, transitioned into construction pretty much at 18 years old, and went on the road. Um, from that point forward, it was back into alcoholism. Um, my first prison sentence was in 2021, or sorry, 2020, let me see, 19. So it was 2001 was my first prison sentence for DUI. Um, so I was 21 years old, um, and then it just kept going from there. I'd get out for a short period of time, go back to construction, get on the road, you know, road crews or mining um, specifically. And I was constantly on the road just drinking with the fellas and picking up alcohol, um, you know, nonstop. And so I've been in prison four times for DUI. Um, and it's not because I'm a bad guy. It's because I have, an, I have yeah. an alcohol problem. Right. Right. And so um, I decided to make a conscious decision uh, that I need to change my life at 41 years old. I need to transition from construction and figure something else out because the road was not for me. It ruined my life. Um, it sent me to prison many, many, many times. And so I transitioned from that directly into uh, network marketing in 2016. Um, I got into MCA, um, I was Motor Club of America. I was promoting that for a little while. Didn't do too well. I was solely trying to learn off of YouTube. Uh, I wasn't doing good. I was just spinning my wheels. I had all the pieces it seemed like, but I just couldn't put the pieces together, yeah. right? And so, um, anyways, fast forward, come to 2020, I, you know, I start pick, dabbling back into it. Uh, at the beginning of 2021, I jump into legendary marketer and here I sit. Nice, man. Nice. And, and things are, are going better for you. Well, for you, give us kind of an update, both. Right. We'll talk about your business. It seems to be blowing right. up a bit right now, but also on a personal level, I assume sure. you're doing well, staying yes. sober. Yes, sir. hundred percent. Nice, man. Okay. So, um, I'm on parole right now, probation. Um, I'm on unsupervised yeah. now. I paid off yep. since I've been out working online and working my nine to five as well wow. while doing this. Um, right. I was able to pay off all my fines, all my restitution, uh, it came out to be like $10,000. Um, I'm doing super good. Um, you know, life today is a lot better than it was before when I was drinking. Um, I have obligations and goals and my mindset is definitely different now. Um, you know, I, I want to give back. I took so much in life and I was such a greedy person uh, by going to prison and getting drunk and, you know, leaving my children from you know behind. And I was mm -hmm. I was being selfish by leaving my kids when I go to work and get drunk. So, you know, in a nutshell, um, my life has transformed. Um, and I, I could, I could, I owe it a lot to my wife um, and my higher power uh, because the support that I have with her um, through the trials and tribulations, this last prison, prison sentence I went to, I, I thought for sure she was gone. Like every other time, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when you go, you find out who your real friends are when you either have to move or you go to prison. And so, right. um, so I, you know, she stuck with me the whole time, man. And it just really has transformed my life to another level, catapulted it to another level uh, to where I see somebody that has backed me up. So this mm. whole process, you know, me getting in trouble with my alcoholism to trying to work online as as well as working a 12 hour shift in construction. So, yeah. man, um, you know, it, you know, my life today is different. Uh, at yeah. 41 years old, I wish I would have figured it out earlier. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we all got to learn right. sometime. Yeah. Uh, I think I think many of us can can relate to that. Um you know, <laughs> I'm sure there's some people who are older than 41 on, um, you know, listening who wish right. that, but you know, which wishes are for, are for witches, bro. You know what I mean? Like this, we don't have a, we're not, we're not, we're not doing abracadabra here. Life is, um, I think what I realized, and I think you are too, is that, you know, you can turn your mess into a message. Uh, and 
You don't have to sit in your shit. You know what I mean? You can turn your struggles into your strengths. You can turn a pile of shit into fertilizer. You know what I mean? And, and sprinkle it around on your life and, uh, and, and turn it into something that is meaningful to you and also can be meaningful to others. Uh, and, you know, that's where I think when we figure out how to mix our purpose with making money, for example, which I really think that I've begun to figure out or I did when I entered into this industry um, after also doing network marketing myself um, and failing miserably. When I got online and started kind of creating content and, and started to find my voice a little bit and figure out how to, instead of always just talking about like features and benefits, which I felt like I was doing when I, when I was in network marketing, like I was like, my juice is the greatest juice or, you know, right. whatever, talking about the product, you know what I mean? Like, and that's just how I was trained. Um, when I got into to, to affiliate marketing and I started marketing online, it was more about storytelling and content creation. And so that's where I really personally figured out and, and I don't, I didn't do it on purpose. I just kind of did it because I needed content. You know what I mean? Like I needed stuff to talk about, uh, just like you do on TikTok and YouTube and stuff like that. And, and so I started to sort of like kind of slowly take a risk with some of my story like you just did right there and i was like holy shit people like this and just like the comments are blowing up with hey awesome eric inspired keep going hats off like you get that sort of positive reinforcement you know like that people are like damn that's pretty cool and you're like yo, maybe all my skeletons in your like, and you're like, man, maybe I'll pull out another skeleton out of the closet. Right. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? And then, and then people are like, holy shit. And you're like, oh, I'll put that one back for now. Right. <laughs> They're not ready for that one. Right. right. But you, you get the point. They're like, damn, like, that's cool. You know? And I, I feel like that's, that's happened for you. Does that resonate with you? And are you experiencing the same thing? And is that one of the ways that you've been able to sort of blow up on TikTok? And you were about to answer that question. Yes. And so, um, yes, it was the first TikTok I had. Um, it was I, I, I ruined it. So I tried to get on there, and I tried to do what everybody else was doing, right? And it didn't align with my character. It didn't align with my avatar. And so, as soon as I became me and just started talking about my story, um, I, I made a new TikTok. The first video I had, it had like ten thousand views. I think my fourth one it hit over a million. As soon as I started telling my story, so. Um, you know, it just became a personable thing. You know, it was hard to open up at first and let people yeah. know a little bit about me because I didn't want people to prejudge. And that's the biggest thing is um, worrying about people prejudging. But my wife had told me, you got to realize how many people drive drunk and just never got caught. You got to realize how many people do the things that you do, right? Um, and just have <laughs> never gotten caught. And you right. are the lucky, unluckiest son of a bitch I've ever met, right? And so <laughs> with that being said, um, you know, I, I just started disclosing my story. I just started telling everybody my story. Um, you know, I really put a lot of heart and I put a lot of passion into, you know, connecting with people and, and, you know, working the nine to five and connecting with them, working on the road and getting drunk and whatever else it may be. And so, you know, just like with going anywhere, if you go to the barbershop enough, you're going to get a haircut. Right. And so yeah. I continued to go to that, that bar and go to that barbershop, but Either way, my my TikTok is catapulted because I started using my my story, uh, yeah. not using anybody else's story. So, right, but yes, yeah, powerful. So I think this is I think this is um, I think this is this is a tricky one for all of you listening right now because everybody I think has a tendency to think that when they hear kind of a story like yours and they hear a strategy like yours that, okay, what I need to do now is I need to go out there and I need to kind of air all my dirty laundry and figure out how to sort of tell my story because that's what storytelling means. And I, I feel like there's, I feel like there's a couple of different, you know, there's a couple of different ways that you can approach storytelling. Um, the first way is hold on let me the first way that you can approach it is 
you know, you can do kind of what Eric and I did, which was sort of, you know, you know, kind of just begin to become super vulnerable with a lot of the scary shit that you're afraid to be prejudged about. Um, if you feel like you don't have, and, and, and I'm telling you, like, the reason why that works is because everybody likes a hero's journey. Everybody likes a comeback story, especially, I mean, I'm not saying that I don't really know other cultures as well because I didn't grow up in other cultures, but I can tell you people in America love a comeback story. Just look around. And the reason why they love a comeback story is because it's entertaining and people love to see a train wreck, but they also really love to see you come back from that train wreck. And I think it's human nature, Eric, like, like, for example, like when my dad, we used to be on construction sites and he used to like fall or hurt himself or hit his head. Like my first reaction was not like, Oh, are you okay? It was to laugh my ass off at him. Right. You know what I mean? And then, you know, if he laid there and was like, dad, I'd freak out. But right. if he got back up, I was like, okay, cool. Like, you know, but I just, I think that people love to see people get hurt and then come back from that. Most right? likely. Um, that's why that works. Now there's other ways to tell stories and we talk about this all the time and we train on it, but, but we'll keep the kind of focus on, on the formula that you've used. Okay. So kind of talk us through that first experience, like what happened for you when you actually got vulnerable and sort of told more of your comeback story. How did you tie that into actual content and then, products that you were promoting i i believe you're promoting stuff in the make money online space right. so how did you tie that comeback story with all those kind of you know with all those kind of rough parts that you were scared to talk right. about how did you tie that into the products that you're promoting okay so this formula is going to work for anybody in their story right this is how you connect with your audience and this is the formula that i came up with so the first thing is the outcome that the person wants right so you got to put yourself in their shoes um, you got to come from yourself. What kind of outcome would you want if you were in their shoes, right? You got to think about that. And this is what your content should be about. And this is what I started utilizing. And the second thing is the problems that they face, like in their life, in your life, what problems did you face growing up? What problems did you face at your job? What problems did you face, right? So this is how we're building content. And the, the third thing is the questions that they ask. So in your, in your, in your comments, right? Um, you know, throughout your just journey online, the comments that they're asking would trigger things that you should put your content about so you can form your avatar on their questions. Right. If, if they're right. And then the fourth thing is the roadblocks that they face and they encounter. So if we can figure out what roadblocks we face as a person, because we got to find our own avatar personally. Right. Just for me. Um, once we find that roadblock that I faced, which was drinking, which was going to the bars, you know, it could be a different upbringing for anybody. But there's a ro everybody has roadblocks and trials and tribulations. If you could put those into video form or on paper or something like that utilizing words that sell right getting emotional putting emotion in it is powerful so my transition happened with your question uh, to answer your question it happened as soon as i noticed when i put up something on facebook i started telling my story how i've been to prison and you know i got married and while i was in prison and all this crazy stuff right and just transformed all the way through and i seen the power that one facebook had i had like 90 or 100 comments on it which i usually don't get a lot of comments and just random people that I never even knew. So I seen the power there. And then I started to apply it on my new TikTok, right? And I just started applying that that this formula that I came up with. Um, and, and that's when I seen the transformation and it became more comfortable. But if you have a background like like mine, I guess you could say, tread lightly on what content you come out with first. Let them go, let them know you're the person, right? Um, let them on, on the lives. I do lives on TikTok every single night, 7 p.m. Um, not to sell people, but to get on to help other affiliate marketers and all that stuff, right? So I'm building my character. I'm being, I'm becoming transparent, right? Mm -hmm. And they're seeing actually, you know, I might have a story, but I'm a good ass dude too, right? Yeah. And so, you know, don't judge a book by the cover and don't judge yourself neither, because mm -hmm. if you do, you're gonna you're gonna set some limitations on yourself, and that's why I did my entire life of set limitations. So, wow. You said a lot of valuable stuff right there. So I want to go back to, I want to backtrack back to the formula that you broke down. Can you go, can you go back over that again? And can you talk us through kind of how, how do you, do you apply that? Do you try to apply that to kind of every video? Is that kind of a loose kind of before you're going to make a video, you just kind of maybe look at that formula and say, 
hey, am I, is there any, you know, like sometimes you can look at something and it'll, it'll remind you, ah, I need to kind of make sure that I put this in the video. Talk us through kind of how, what that okay. was one more time, read it all out. So, and maybe you guys can comment it, comment it down in the I comments. I can even show it. You probably can't read my writing, but yeah. I could. So go back over that for us one more time, okay. and like how you use it, like in practical application. Okay. So how I find my content is through questions. Okay. I build, I base my content that I make off my hook. First and foremost, I find out what questions people have, right? Um, through other people's chats, through people that get fired at jobs or people that are struggling, you know, financially or whatever. I go through people's chats and I find, you know, how do I do this? Or what did you do for this? And I'll make a hook on that on emotion, right? And so as soon as I find that emotional hook, then I start to add my formula, right? So, and the emotional hook is is uh -huh. basically the question: What do you do if you get fired from right. your job today, and you need to pay rent by the end of the month? Like right. that would be an example of an emotional kind of hook based right. off a question or based off somebody somebody's experience, something they're going right. through right now. Right. So you could be like, "What would like?" Here's a good hook: What would you do? How do you do? What if? Um, how, how can? Um, do you? These are all things that you put. You're, you're making it not personable but you're asking them, right? And so it could be like, what would you do with an extra four hours a week to spend with your family? Mm. And they're gonna click on it like, okay, what would, I, what would you do, right? That's just an example. So that would be your hook, and then you got your body, and then you got your call of action, right? So back to the formula, um, the outcome that they want, I go through questions. That's the number one thing is what outcome does my audience want? And everybody's audience is different. If you find your avatar, you know, you can get on the online space and be like everybody else and promote the same way. And you'll never, I can say you'll never even get to that next level, right? Until you become personable with who you are, because then it's become easy. If you try to put on a, a front all day, then it's not going to work. It's, it's going to get old after a while. It's going to be hard to put on a, a show every day. Mm -hmm. So anyways, the outcome that they want um, is based on your experiences. You know, are they going to want more time with their family? Um, are they want more financial freedom? Are they want more whatever, right? More vacation time. And then the problems that they face, what problems in their life are they facing so they can get the outcome that they want, right? Is it because they're nine to five? Is it because um, they're always on the road? Is it because um, whatever? It could be anything when it be, you know, we, we make it personable. And then the third one is the questions that they ask. And so that's what I was telling you guys. I go in through comments. Um, mm -hmm. You can go ask the public.com as well. And then uh, you can find out what the public's asking about affiliate marketing or network marketing. And once you find that out, it's going to say how much does affiliate marketing cost or what does it take for affiliate marketing? So then I base my questions or my, my hooks and my, my, my material, my, right, my videos based off a person's questions. And the fourth one is the roadblocks that they face. What's stopping them from getting to that point? You know, do they need a vehicle to get to that point? Do they need some assistance? You know, do they need me to go live every night at 7 p.m. to get over their roadblocks? You know, can we work through this? Mm -hmm. So that's the formula that I have. You know, it's a simple formula. Um, it's all in my uh, it's all in all of my content. Um, I try to put all steps in there so that I hit all of the troubled areas of, you know, my 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 audience. Yeah. Well, I what I what I love about that is that you're creating content that they want versus content that you want to create. Right. And this is a big marketing lesson that I continuously, I think, forget. And I have to remind myself of, and I, and I forgot about it for a, like, I would, I would forget about it, forget about it, forget about it, like get lucky, create something that, that was based around exactly what people wanted. That would take off. Then I would forget about it, forget about it, forget about it, create content that I wanted, talk about things that I wanted to talk about. And then I would get lucky again and talk about something that th they wanted. And then that would take off. Then I'd forget about it again. Or, and, and now, and, and, and here's an example. So like I, like today, like I love to talk about like self-care, personal development, um, emotional intelligence. Like I love to talk about mindset. I love to, but, but not, not everybody wants to talk about that. You right. say you want to talk about that, but if we like, people are like, Oh, I want to talk about that. But if I gave you a choice about make, how to make more money and get more leads or do better self-care and increase emotional intelligence, 
people in this niche would pick get more, make more money and get more leads every time. Absolutely. Right. right. And so, and so that's what I'm t- like, like, that's not particularly the content that I want to talk about personally all the time, but it's what they want. So there's this lesson in marketing, which is sell people what they want, not what you want, not what right. you want to sell them or, or sell them what they want, not what they need. Right. right. What, what most people in this industry need is they need personal development. They need, you know what I mean? They need to develop habits. They need to, they need to transform their mindset from employee to entrepreneur. Like that's what most people need, but that's not what they want. They don't want to know they, they're not, they don't, they don't want to bother with that right they just want to know how to what do i do to make money right now and that's a that's a conflict so i have to kind of sprinkle that shit in kind of without people knowing that i'm doing it because i know it matters but i always have to come back to what do people want right and 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 what i love about your formula there is that you're going and doing actual research you're actually whether it that that askthepublic.com you mentioned that whether it's whether it's going through your comments whether it's going through other people's videos comments whether it's asking your audience you're finding out exactly what they want and then you're turning the the titles in the hooks of your content into common questions that they are asking that is on the forefront of their mind every right. day in creating content around that right. Yep. Is that, creating, right? is that I'm creating content a hundred percent. I'm creating content. What makes their life miserable, right? Because my life was miserable before and absolutely hundred percent. Um, you know, once the thing of it is I, you, you'll, I get to the point now to where I don't have to really search and dig, dig, dig. At first I did because I was trying to find who I was and my avatar. I was trying to find to speak how to, how to speak to people. Now that I know how to speak to people, um, it's a lot easier, uh, yep. you know, but I might run into another problem with, so, uh, you know, yesterday a person was a, re- a vet that was injured vet. Now he's working construction, can't get out of it, has no money. So I, I'm not a vet, but I have family members that were. So I could put myself in their shoes and their struggles through, you know, that. And I kind of just reverse it, I guess you could say. Um, and just to tell them that there is hope and there's, you know, people out there that do, are just like you that are looking for the same opportunity. Yeah. Um, and, and just building value the entire, the entire time. That's it's it's easy really once you find out your avatar you can literally sit down be you without having to worry about anything and it will just flow it it, it comes right can you still hear me clearly i can okay so yeah like what comes up for me when you say that dude is that like if if any of you all are listening right now and you're like when you're like thinking to yourself, like, what is he talking about when he, when he says avatar, like, no, we're not talking about the movie avatar. Oh, sorry. You know what I mean, like avatar, who's your perfect customer. And like, I want to, I want to pose this in a, in a different, I want to say exactly what you did that in a different way. So like yeah. people may, I want to make sure you guys get what Eric's saying. Cause it's really important. Here's another way to say it. Find your perfect avatar, find your perfect customer or, what is the person who wants to buy who who's who you who want wants to buy your product what are the questions that they have and what are the things that they want to hear people talk about every day because there's a specific there's a like i just said like with people in the make money online space the affiliate marketing space like they don't like they they gravitate and watch the videos all the way through that talk about the things that they that they want to listen to most right and what mm-hmm. that is is that how to how to get more traffic how to get more leads how to how to make more money how to go viral on tiktok right so here's my point in saying that that what I believe for most of you guys, you need to do to be able to take your accounts and your traffic and your lead flow to the next level is you need to try different questions and topics within the, within the, the, the kind of broad spectrum. So if you're in the make money online space, talk about traffic generation, talk about blowing up your TikTok channel, talk about lead generation, talk about landing pages. But there's something that people want to hear more than anything. And if you 
test out different subjects and you find out this is the catnip. This particular topic is what people want to hear more than anything. You can literally kill a year's worth of content and continue to just blow up your traffic and lead flow, zeroing in on that exact catnippy topic that and not deviate from it. And Eric, what I think most people do where they make the mistake is they talk about too big of a broad spectrum of shit that, that they might have one video that takes off and they feel like they got lucky, right. but maybe it was that video that took off that was the most interesting. Their target audience was most interested in. Right. What would you say, first of all, what comes up for you as I say this? Do you think what I'm saying is accurate? And what do you think is your target avatar's catnip? What is the thing that they go crazy to hear about? Okay, so yes, it's absolutely, you, you explained it perfectly well. Um, and then their catnip would be basically the struggle in life, right? Uh, my, 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 my audience is directed towards the nine to five blue collar worker. Don't see the family gone on the road all the time. Uh, the list goes on, you know, people that are injured at work, been doing the same thing forever, want to change. So, um, their catnip is basically seeing my transformation coming from, you know, working a nine to five or that's, I guess, stereotype, but working 12 hour shifts six days a week, five days a week while working my nine to five and having the strength, right? Emotionally, because you have to become emotionally attached to your people. When they see that emotion, you could sit there and talk about funnels. You could sit there and talk about all this stuff, you, but you got to talk to your audience in the right way. Yeah. What you product, what they, are, you're saying when you hit their heart, when you hit their heart and you get their attention, right? 100%. So once you hit their heart, you know, if you get emotional when you're, when you're doing something or you look back at your video and you get emotion yourself about it, because it just, you know, you ever, you ever watched like a comedian that is so funny because everything he said is true. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So like, like they'll just, they'll just be talking about something and just be random life. And then the way they say it just makes it so funny. Right. Yeah. And so that's mm -hmm. that emotional attachment you need when you're making your content. So that's what I try to do. Um, is their catnip is getting that emotional content, that emotional bond with them, right? So they know, hey, there's another guy that relates with me and he's just not talking about sell this, sell that, sell this system, this system, that, because I'm a guy that knows nothing, right? So you got to speak to your, 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 your traffic or your people um, with the, whatever you're trying to promote, right? So, it, you know, you could be, People are people start at different levels, right? So when we're talking, my my traffic is people that are struggling in life and they want to change. Let me let me say this back to you because I want to like I your answer actually, like I wasn't actually expecting you to say that, but then I'm like of course that's exactly what built my and built my brain was the struggle that I talk that people could relate, and it made them feel and it made them feel understood. Feel like they, they get a situation that they were in right yeah. that's exactly what you're talking about it's that inspiration right and, and that's what i think so many of us because we get caught in the the weeds of thinking that we need to over explain do too much teaching in our content that's where we lose people because what i really think is that people who buy the most and who who get the most attached to creators like yourself is, is they get attached to people who are entertaining and inspirational because right. that's what people want more than anything. They, 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 they don't pick up their phone and start scrolling on TikTok because they're like sitting there ready to get, walk into a classroom and learn right. how to set up an autoresponder. Like what they want and what they like, what they want is they, they want hope that they can get out of the shitty situation that they're in. Right. right. And I think that's why the vulnerability of sharing what your life was like, what have you, what hole did you crawl out of? Like some of you guys are sitting there thinking and gals are thinking, well, I didn't have a drug and <laughs> homelessness prison story like these guys, you know, but did you struggle with depression? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, depression. I'm, not asking, I'm asking everybody else because. Oh. They're, they're, they're saying they're, I'm just trying to think about the questions that people are asking who are listening to us right now, the excuses that they're making of why they can't do this. And I'm, what I'm saying is you don't have to have a down by the river, homeless ad addiction, alcoholism story. 
if you talk about things vulnerably, like that you crawled out of a depression hole, that you that you sacrificed years of your life in a job working for a boss that you hate and you felt used and abused, right? That you were inside of an abusive relationship, a relationship where there was no love, and you and you wasted decades of your life in that and didn't really go out there and go after your dreams and goals. Like, like when you start to share those vulnerable pieces of your life and now what you're doing about it, now how you're doing things differently and why there's hope for those people right. maybe listening, that's where your catnip is. It, right. Eric, are you picking up what I'm putting down? No, oh, yeah. And so just for the everybody out there that's you know thinking about getting into this business um, or working for themselves or whatever it may be, just trying to do uh, on the side, um, if you don't have – if you're not coming into this with, you know, uh, a backstory of being, a, uh, an, you know, an acceptable, like a, a, a top ranking affiliate, you don't have all this, you know, money to prove that you made all this money. Um, just start with your story because that's all you have. So um, it doesn't matter what it is. Like Dave was saying, uh, it could be from a bad relationship to being a stay at home mom and never really having, you know, just all you do is stay home and your husband goes to work. You have nothing to do, but take care of the kids. You can, you can, if you're a stay-at-home mom and you're trying this opportunity, you can relate with those types of people, um, stay-at-home moms that you know don't don't have a job that want something else to do. So there's just so many ways everybody can actually connect with people. It's and I don't mean to make it sound like it's a difficult thing because it's not. I transitioned from construction into this, yeah. um, and this and I just acted who I my, myself. At first I didn't. I tried to act like everybody else and it didn't work for me. Yeah. Then I I stepped it up and now I'm. I'm getting over 150 leads a day. Well, check this out, man. Like, it's like I'm echoing, guys. Am I echoing? You was a little bit. Hopefully I'm not anymore. I just wanted to, like, I watch my husband. Shana, Shana said, I watch my husband take his life and I deal with that memory every day. Like, wow. First of all, I just want to say, wow. But how, I mean, I just, I wonder how many people you could inspire by the by the fact that that you went through that and and are now picking yourself back up and and moving forward 100%. Uh, you know millions of people could, could relate with that well millions of people i mean and if it's not that exact situation it's the feelings and the in the sadness and the trauma and in in the inspiration they can relate with the feelings um all right so it looks like i'm having an echo here i'll, I'll turn this off but um so say one more time, just pretend I'm one of your, one of your, your followers, somebody who's been watching your content and you talk about kind of what you're talking about now. And they say, Eric, I don't have a story. I don't have anything that's nearly as entertaining as you do. What, t talk, what would you say to me? Um, so, So I guess I would start with basically what was your childhood like? You know, we got to find out from the ground up, you know, write down all of your, your, your good memories, write down all of your bad memories. Um, uh, you know, if you, you know, just different situations, you just write them down. It's personable, personal, but you know, you can write down all the good times and bad times in your life. Right. And you can make content literally out of the good times and bad times in your life and how you took it from one point and you, your thought process behind it. Right. So when you're when you're on, you know, when you're trying to tell somebody how to find their avatar or try to find out how to tell their story um, or what their story is going to be, it's based on like their history, you know, where they've come from, where they're at, and where they're going to be, right? Their 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 past, their current, and their future. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Here's where I came from, you know. This is where I'm at now, and this is where I want to be, mm -hmm. right? And that's super inspirational. And even though you don't have a story of a prison mm -hmm. or getting in trouble or drinking or alcoholism or whatever. You may have been in a family that you know was super wealthy and you've been in the black sheep, right? And then they wanted you to go one way, uh, you went a different, or you know, they wanted you to go to college and they kept beating college into you. And you just said, I don't want to go to college, I want to do something for myself. And you could use that story say, Hey, my whole family's been telling me that you know to go to college. Now I'm on TikTok, now they're making fun of me. But then I showed them how much money I'm making, and now they're all trying to jump on TikTok again with me, right? <laughs> Just you know, that's just one little hook right there, you know. Right. And I just got chills thinking about it because I just could relate. I could feel that relation. No joke, I got chills yeah. thinking about that because that is power right there. 
That's right. power. And you could take your situation, your story. Everybody is unique, man. Everybody's yeah. unique. Yeah. It doesn't matter your story. Everybody has a similar story next to it. And all you got to do is speak to one person. One. That's it. Because that, when you speak to one person correctly, they're, they're going to come in the masses. Yeah. Man, bro, that's that's wisdom right there. That's really that's really good stuff. So you're now getting 150 leads a day? Average. My biggest Average. day on, on TikTok when I hit that million four hundred thousand on the I don't know, you want to, you can play it. I'm not sure if you can play it and show the screen, but it's a short video and you guys could like see people the power of it. But uh a million four hundred thousand, I think the next day, um, I had like almost four hundred and ten leads, right? One day, one night. And then it, it trickles down three hundred and then I'll get seventy five. 150. That's not impressive because anybody can have a video go viral, like and get right. What's impressive to me is that you're averaging 150. You know why? Leads a day. Why? You know why? Because the call to action. If you don't tell, because people, no, I'm not, no disrespect, but people are like sheep, right? If you get through a video and it comes to an end, it's like they're okay. There's no sequel to it. Okay. There's no part two. Um, you just gave all you like, like Dave says, you you chum the water. You don't give them the whole boat, right? In a sense. You know, you got to leave them to say, okay, if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and give me a like and a follow. Don't always send them to your link. You know, that's just spam. It just sounds, okay, that's what everybody says, right? Give me a like and a follow. You want to connect with me? You want to see transparency? Join my live tonight at 7 p.m. You'll see who the real person I am. Blah, point blank. They look in your eyes. They feel it. They see it. They live it. Damn, my G. You're getting serious. So you're not always giving people a call to action to no, go. not to click on my link, but a call to action to either like my video, comment on my video, or follow me. Right. So, and you know, there'll always be the link in my bio. Right. Um, but either way, if I tell them to like and follow, and they do like and follow, they're most likely going to like and follow, and then check out my bio and maybe click on my link anyway. Right. So you don't even have to throw that link in there. That's a little golden nugget you don't always have to say click on my link click on my link click on my link click on my link it sounds salesy scammy whatever else be you mm. follow me well I, I, following. I, lo I like that monetize I, I like that because i you know allow people to come to you and buy don't right. always pressure and be like link 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 right link in the bio link in the bio link. like you're right everybody is saying that and the minute that especially if there's other people that they've seen say that that you say that you're just sounding like everybody else. So give them a unique call to act. Right. Right. And let them, people are going to go to your profile and look at your link anyways. Right. right. They're, they're going to do that. They're going to go stalk you and check you out. Look right. at how they like the content that you create. So let them buy, let them come to you, get them hooked by, getting the follow right get them hooked by getting the you know i think that's one of the most important things that that is oftentimes underlooked is getting that subscribe or that follow versus the cl the, the clicking of the link because the average person is going to need to see your content a few times set well seven right that's and that's a that's something yeah. that i've heard a lot too dude mm -hmm. i don't know if it's two seven hours two hundred Right. But it's more than once that people are going to need to hear from you and see you to buy from you. So the most important thing that we need to do is we need to get somebody to either like, follow, subscribe to our whatever channel we're on. And then the next most important thing, if you think about it, is getting their email. Right. That allows us to follow up in the in the inbox. The third then, which is the lead, right? That's lead generation. I, th I think you could consider in 2021, somebody subscribing or following your page, also a form of lead generation, but it's always been considered getting the email, right? That's been considered the lead generation. The third most important thing is making the sale, right? That's the third, but that only comes after doing one and two. So you, you, what you're saying is you're more focused on, calls to action that are built and based around telling them to like and subscribe your page and um and, and are you doing any do you ever do any free giveaways lead magnets free gifts that you allow that you say hey you can download my book or my ebook or anything like that not yet so go back a little bit um you don't find your audience your content finds your audience right so that's the first thing. And then lead generation, um, I have ran some, but right now, you know, in order to actually 
capture a lead and make it yours on TikTok because that platform can go away at any time. You need to catch that email address. You need to catch that that individual because if TikTok goes away, if Facebook goes away, if whatever goes away tomorrow, and then all of your leads are gone. All right. Um, so you know, to get back to what you were kind of saying was um, with the lead generation. I think if you put out the content that's specific for what you're trying to talk about, um, your leads, your, your, your audience will come. And when you're start, starting your TikTok or any account out, start building value first. Start building value. Start being people to like you and, and you know, for you, who you are. Because if you start putting out uh, call to action content right away, I believe, from my last TikTok, my experience, people won't click on it. People won't click on it. They're not seeing your story. They're just seeing some random dude that's like everybody else. So, I, you know. If you tell your story, if you don't have a story and you know you haven't came from, you know, extensive history of marketing, just just talk about you. Yeah. No, I so did you lose a TikTok? Is that what you were saying? Yeah, well, so I started my first TikTok and I started out with the very first video was uh, you know, I transform, I guess, from working nine to five to this and not making this much money and just clicking my link my link in my bio to get started. And it started out with like 10 views and then 20 views and 30 views because all of my call to action was click on my link if you want to get started and learn how to make money from home, right? It's not like, hey, I came from this history. You know, I, if I done it, you can do it, right? Anyways, my first TikTok was screwed up. I spent like months on it just to get a thousand subscribers, months, right? And I was happy when I got a thousand. Then I got my, then I was going back and forth from business account to personal account to get my link on the on the page, which is a bad idea. Stick with just creator when you first start out. You can't get your link, but either way. When I, when I tried this formula for the first time on my new TikTok, I had a thousand subscribers in two days or a day or something like that. So, um, you from pitchy to storytelling. I mean, that's the bottom line. Storytelling, storytelling. And then, the, okay, another funny thing is, Dave, I forgot to tell you, is uh, in, my, in my hashtags, you know, I put passive income, you know, affiliate marketing, stuff like that. But my main one is going to be like construction. My, okay, or my, if I was a work from home mom or I was a stay at home mom, I would be a, a, a like a target a hashtag like for, you know for the day like the trending hashtag for the day that that you know corresponds with what your story is gonna be about and then your second one be should be work from home moms or stay at home moms so then I'm I was like people are on, I'm on a I'm like my target audience is construction so people that are in construction and they're scrolling seeing construction all day looking at funny construction videos they come across my video and it's you know it's a construction video but all of a sudden it goes into how this dude just transformed his life in six months to making money online. And so they'll come on my live and they're like, I don't even know how you're on my for you page, but I'm here. Right. So you can actually utilize and attract your audience through the hashtags too powerfully. Um, it does work. That's a good tip because I think most people have a tendency to use the most common, which, which in the most obvious, which could also, which could also be considered spammy. You know? Right. If you're if you're in the make money on online space and you're talking about affiliate marketing, then what's the obvious hashtag? Affili right. Hashtag affiliate marketing, right? Right. A instead of what you said, which is use a hashtag that's based around a story that you're telling. Right. On who you're kind of again, if you're a construction, right. you know, hashtag carpenter, hashtag exactly. maybe, hashtag lineman, hashtag electrician, exactly. Hashtag, you know, builder. Hashtag, hashtag babysitter. Hashtag babysitter. Hashtag <laughs> uh, stay at home mom. Hashtag whatever. Here's my formula. So I switch it up. So I do one trending, one broad, and then one specific in the morning. And then my second video for the day is three niche and three trending. This is for the hashtags. And then for my third video of the day, I do three niche and three brand specific. So I hope you know that makes this sense. So one trending would be a trending viral like hashtag. Um, when you open it up, you go to search. Yeah. You see those trending one. That's a trending, and then a broad would be like babysitters, construction workers, uh, stuff like that. And then specific would be work at, work from home, side hustle, uh, affiliate marketing, right? So you just hit the trending, right? Then you hit the broad of what, who you're trying to hit, and then you hit the specific of what you're trying to do. Hmm. Good, really good tips. Really I didn't go to no Facebook trending except for what's in legendary, and uh, just my own trial and error and tribute, you know, and everything. It works. Well, bro, I'm I'm so happy for you, man. What would you tell somebody um, who is, you know, thinking about getting started with the challenge right now and coming into this community and, and uh, taking it serious? 
Okay, so first and foremost, um, if you're going to start any program, it doesn't matter if this one, 15 day challenge, doesn't matter what it is, it could, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, if you're not going to follow all of what the mentor says, what the training says, 100%, and put in all the the actions, you're you're not going to see the the amount of like success you would if you put all of the action in. So no matter what, what I'm trying to say is, if you, no matter what you get into, I recommend the 15 day challenge because it runs you from ground zero. And from knowing nothing to establishing a foundation, which you need, and you can build off that foundation. So what it does basically transforms you from knowing nothing to having a link online and to promoting yourself. And then you becoming with, your, you know, finding your avatar. So, you know, find a challenge. Um, this one is, it's, it's great. This is where I started. I transformed literally in six months. How long have I been with you, Dave? Like three months, two months, something like that. Not very long, right? Just yeah. through the 15 day challenge, I got so much more value than I did when I was working or not working, but utilizing uh, YouTube uh, 2016, trying to learn. And, you know, I, I came to the table with some knowledge, but I had all these pieces that were all just floating in the air everywhere that I got from here and from here. And all I, I was on this learn mode, learn, 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 learn. And I never applied. What's great about the 15 day challenge is you learn a little bit, then you apply a little bit, then you learn a little bit, then you apply a little bit. So you earn as you learn. No joke. My first commission was like uh, nine days or something. Nine days after starting, I think it was a uh, 15 day challenge. Um, so it was just applying the tools I was I learned in it. And, you know, if, if, if you're starting out and you want to just accelerate and just skyrocket from this point forward, um, I recommend uh, running with Dave Sharp in this. Definitely. For sure. hundred percent. Well, bro, I appreciate that. And I mean, what makes us great is, is people like you too coming on here and, and, and the community too, the community. Okay. The Facebook group, it doesn't matter. It, it could be, it doesn't matter. Any question I have, uh, I go to the Facebook group, uh, I, it gets answered and there's probably 50 different people that are going to be supportive and then give me, you know, directions to a link or a video or, you know, if you're, if you're new and you're, and you're getting into this or you're already in the 15 day challenge, reach out to that, that Facebook group. Um, stay acclimated. Don't, you know what I mean? In the Facebook group every day, answering questions, uh, asking questions, just be a part of it. It's a lifestyle change, right? Yeah. So it's a lifestyle change. You know, if you need to wake up earlier in the morning, an hour earlier, so you can work on your business and you're working nine to five, that's what you got to do, man. If you still work out, then you got to wake up an hour extra. So two hours extra early is sacrifice in this business, right? It's not about the money because it's the cheapest business model to get in hundred percent for passive income to start out. You know, you can't get any, you can't go wrong, right? A store, all these other things that you could do. I looked into it. It costs so much money and your SEO and all these things, right? You can't become personal with a person. I don't believe it's going to be a long-term sustainable business for a person that's just starting out. So this right here is the groundwork and the fundamentals for anybody that needs to get going online and anybody that needs help follow me, come to my lives, whatever. Uh, and I, it doesn't matter if you're in this program or if you're struggling, it doesn't matter. Come to my lives. I'll, I'll give you assistance. I'll give you gold nuggets. I, I'm transparent. So, you know, you sign up with whoever I, I got your back. Yeah. Well, that's, 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 that's awesome. And I think that if you guys can pick from what Eric, is, like his approach to this whole process, Nope. is that uh, I take away is that the mindset and the approach is, is, is long-term. It's not how can I make money today, right? right? It's how can I establish a following and a, and a friendship base, right? Because ultimately a loyal following, a fanatical following are just kind of friends online. Like you right. would consider like people who listen to me, they would be like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I know Dave Sharp. I'm friends with him. Like, even if we don't know each other, even if you only watch the show and I don't know who you are, you think of me like a friend because you listen to me and you come on the show and you, and it's like, we're kicking it together. You know what I mean? It's like, you, you see me every day you think, right. So, so it's like, who can I help today? How can I, how can I, how can I go live or create content that inspires, provides hope in, in that, in that, you know, how can I be friendly to people? How can I be of service to people? Not because I can make a buck from them today, but because I can earn their trust, friendship in their business in the future in delaying that gratification, right? What'll happen when you have that mindset 
is that more than what you think will come today and a lot more than what you think will come later on. And that is exactly. the path that you're experiencing right now. And I'm, I'm happy as hell for you, bro. I'm ready. I'm ready to rock, man. You know, you are rocking, bro. You ain't ready. You ain't ready. You're you're done getting ready to get ready, right? Right. You did that for a while. Now you're ready. You're rocking, and you're helping other people get ready to go after their dreams. And whether they, you know, in in a start a business, whether they work in the make money online space, whether they do affiliate marketing, whether they learn from us, you're out there providing value to the marketplace providing inspiration through these vulnerable and emotional stories that you're telling and sharing yourself. So you're earning every like, you're earning every follow, you're earning every lead, you're earning every dollar through turning your struggles into your strengths. And there, you're rocking. You are rocking, bro. Thanks, so keep up the good work, man. And I appreciate uh, it. come back and keep us posted in the future, bro. Oh, I'm sure you're going to have me on the show again in the future. Of course I am, and you're speaking it into existence right now. Oh, 100% manifestation all the way. Vision boards, give you guys a vision board. Uh, yeah, vision board is 100%. You know, uh, you got to see what's coming. Um, there's all kinds of stuff, but just power of the mindsets. It's awesome. You know, I was in a deep, deep, dark place in my life before. I've been in prison four times. You know, I thought about suicide many times. And uh, you know what? Things will be all right. Yeah, bro. Well, congrats. And good for you, mommy. All right. I, I feel that. All right. I feel that, brother. I feel too that you stand for where you're at. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing it with us today, brother. All right. I appreciate it. All right, man. You have a good one, Dave. Hey, man. I'll talk All to right. you. All right. Yes, See you. Definitely. All right. Bye. You guys have a good day. All right, guys. That's it. We're going to wrap up. I'm on my phone. So we're just, there's not going to be no close. This is the close. Peace. Get the hell out of here. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Late.